So what is game theory? Let me give you a couple of definitions. First, game theory, a branch of mathematics that analyzes situations in which players must make decisions and then receive payoffs based on what other players decide to do. My definition of game theory, just to make it a little clearer, is what makes game theory different is that more than one person is making choices, and those choices are interdependent. That is, the best choice of person A depends on the choice of person B, and vice versa. So let's dive into this just a little bit to make sure everybody has the right idea. So the field of microeconomics studies how people make choices, and most of microeconomics focuses on a person or a firm making the best choice they can, and that's it. Just optimization. For example, in a typical microeconomics class, you'd study somebody has a budget of $100, and they can either spend it on good A or good B, and good A costs $2 each, and good B costs $3 each. How should this person spend their money to maximize their utility? A business example, a firm has some employees, they have some machines, we know the cost of producing different numbers of units, and by analyzing the costs and looking at the price they can sell for, they maximize their profit. How do they maximize profit? By producing the right number of units. This is standard maximization ideas. Game theory looks at maximization, optimization problems, when people know that whatever they're choosing, that's not the end of the story that their choice affects other people's choices and the other people's choices are also going to affect your choices. So these choices are interdependent. In game theory and in the study of games, we talk about three different kinds of games, but mostly we're focused on this third kind of game, games of strategy. They're games of chance. For example, a game of chance would be simply a game where you roll dice. And there's no strategy involved. You roll dice, someone else rolls dice, and whoever gets the highest number wins, for example. There's no strategy. It's entirely a game of chance. A game of skill is something that you can practice and get better at. Perhaps you're playing a game to see who can hit the most free throws in basketball. No strategy there. There's a little bit of chance, but it's mostly based on your personal skill. How much have you practiced and how good are you at doing this thing? Games of strategy are ones where you have to think through, what should I do and what does the other player think they should do? And how should I make my best choice based on what I think they're going to do? and they're making the same kind of choices. So games of strategy would be something like poker, like chess. Now, it's true that many games are going to involve many different elements. Some may be games of chance, some may involve skill, and some may involve strategy. For example, American football. Some of it is chance. Who wins the initial coin flip to determine who gets the first kickoff, right? Some of it is skills. Some of it is how fast, how big, how strong are you? How good are you at catching the ball? But then a lot of American football is also strategy. Based on what you know about the other team, what kind of offense should you run? And based on what offense they see you running, they're going to choose an appropriate defense. And then you might mix up your offense, etc. So, not all games can just be labeled as one of these three, but when we're talking about game theory, mostly we're focusing on things where the strategic element is the main thing that we're concerned with. So let me spend just a few minutes telling you a tiny bit about the history of game theory and give you a few more examples. Interest in game theory really started to get going during World War II. Think about how the analysis of strategic decision making, how can I make my best decision when I'm playing against another person who is also making their best decision, but what I choose is going to affect them, what they choose is going to affect me. It's this action-reaction back and forth. World War II, 
the strategic interaction was very important. Lives were literally on the line. So a lot of the serious research got started in the late 1930s and early 1940s. The first main book that came out that talked about game theory was by John von Neumann, famous mathematician, and Oscar Morgenstern. And in 1944, they released this book called On the Theory of Games and Economic Behavior. And it was a good start, but the kinds of games they studied there were just a limited kind of class of games. Limited types of things could be studied, but it was an excellent start. The next major breakthrough that you may have heard of, there's a movie about him, John Nash, called A Beautiful Mind, and his paper that he published called Equilibrium Points in In-Person Games five years later in 1949 really made the field of game theory wide open to where we could study many, many different types of situations. And the field has taken off from there. Now, in their book, John von Neumann and Oscar Morgenstern, when they're discussing the need to develop this field of game theory, made this analogy saying, well, some problems are just pure optimization problems, as I mentioned before, and those pure optimization problems, you can think about the kinds of things that Robinson Crusoe needs to do. Now, if you're not familiar, Robinson Crusoe is a book that came out hundreds of years ago. This is the illustration in the original publication, The Life and Strange Surprising Adventures of Robinson Crusoe of York, a mariner who lived eight and twenty years all alone on an uninhabited island on the coast of America near the mouth of the great river of Orunake, having been cast ashore by shipwreck, wherein all the men perished but himself. And so this book about Robinson Crusoe was about survival. What are the kinds of choices that Robinson Crusoe had to make as a modern human being living all alone on a deserted island? These are the kinds of choices we focus on typically in standard microeconomics. Hmm, given my skills, given my resources and the environment I'm in, how do I allocate my time? How do I allocate my energy to get enough food to survive and enough shelter to survive. So standard optimization, Robinson Crusoe. Game theory is what happens when you bring more people into the mix. And Robinson Crusoe doesn't just have to decide, well, what do I want to eat? Robinson Crusoe needs to decide how to allocate his time to collect or produce whatever things he thinks are most valuable that he might trade with other people. So he's not just taking into account his own choices, but also those of others. A couple of examples here to crystallize the difference between these two types of problems. An ordinary maximization problem might be you're playing solitaire. How do you play in solitaire to maximize your chances of winning versus poker? In poker, all of your choices have to be couched in the idea that it's action and reaction. All of your bets, all of your choices are going to influence the choices of the other players and vice versa. Ordinary maximization would be in pure competition, what are the choices of a firm? In pure competition, there are so many other firms out there, you have to take the market price as given. In a monopoly setting, you choose your price and therefore your quantity that you think will maximize your profit. End of story. But think about how this is different if you had a duopoly setting price. This is a game theory problem. If I'm one of the two duopolists and I raise my price, I have to anticipate how the other duopolist is going to react to that change in price. Golf probably a pretty good single player. This is more of a game of skill, in my mind at least. Soccer or American football would be more of a game theoretical problem. Every player has to constantly be acting and reacting to what they see the other players doing. Change your own strategy in reaction to what the strategy of other players is. Ordinary maximization problem, I need to sell bread to a customer. So I need to decide the price and quantity of bread to sell to a particular customer. That's it. But what if I'm selling fire insurance to a customer? This has the potential for some action reaction. What if I sell a fire insurance policy to a customer 
where the amount I'm going to pay if the building burns down is worth more than the building is worth to begin with. Well, this provides an incentive to this customer to burn the building down and collect the insurance policy. So when I sell this insurance policy, I have to anticipate how the terms of the policy are going to cause this customer to react. Ordinary maximization problem. I decide to quit smoking. Good choice. Maximize your own health. Maximize your own welfare. But in reality, when you decide to quit smoking, you're playing a game against yourself, against your future self. So it's all well and good for me to sit here and say, I'm not going to smoke anymore. Your future self is somebody that you're playing against. Your future self is going to have cravings, is going to be tempted. A game theoretic analysis of the problem of a person quitting smoking has to take into account that my future self might find cigarettes around the house and that's going to make it easier for me to break my promise to quit smoking. So how do I set my future self up for success? So this has just been a brief introduction to the idea of the difference between how we think about making choices in standard microeconomics, these ordinary maximization problems, to how we have to think about analyzing problems in a game theory or game theoretic framework. If you have any questions about this, please let me know. This is Dr. Berkey signing out. I wish you the best of luck in your economic studies. Bye-bye now.